Tonight we begin this Sunday with the latest on a horrific national tragedy. Five people were killed, 25 others were hurt, a shooting rampage overnight at a gay Colorado Springs nightclub. This was at Club Q in Southern Colorado. A suspect was taken into custody and is being treated. Tonight we're learning more about those who helped end the very latest American mass shooting. There is much we are still waiting to learn about this tragic incident. We know one or more patrons heroically intervened to subdue the suspect. And we praise those individuals who did so because their actions clearly saved lives. As authorities try to figure out a motive behind the shooting, the attack is still fresh on so many minds here in Atlanta in the LGBTQ community. And 11 Alive's Joe Ripley joins us right now. How's everybody processing this? I mean, this is such a horrific, just here we go again kind of story. Yeah, it's, it's exactly that, Jeff. And you get a gamut of emotions when you talk about this, uh, from anger to heartbrokenness to, to shock, really, just stunned at the latest mass shooting. This news uh, out west in Colorado has folks here in the Atlanta area concerned and worried about the LGBTQ community right here at home. Calamity in Colorado causing an aftershock in Atlanta. Authorities confirmed five people are dead and at least a couple dozen more injured after a shooting at Club Q, a gay bar in Colorado Springs. We are grieving with them. We send our love, our condolences, our prayers and our strength. Bishop O.C. Allen III is the executive director of the Vision Community Foundation, which organizes the popular Atlanta Black Gay Pride Festival. He says while the city has seen progress when it comes to inclusion of the LGBTQ community, there is a feeling of being targeted. The swastikas and, and the hate speech and the rhetoric show us that we have a lot more work to do. Over the summer, Atlanta police arrested a man they say drew swastikas and other hate speech on the iconic Rainbow Crosswalk at 10th and Piedmont. The site vandalized twice in one week. In other instances, drivers left their mark after doing donuts over the landmark. I'm hiking to where it's just not just putting the clubs. I'm hiking where it's every day. Every day I get in my car. Raymond Nelson says he usually feels safe when out and about at LGBTQ owned bars and clubs, but some shops in Midtown have ramped up security in recent months, especially when it gets busy during the weekend. To process, grieve, heal, and move forward, Allen points to loving one another and passing stronger laws to deter violence. We have a common bond beyond our skin color, beyond our sexual orientation, beyond all of the, the societal differences that we have. We came together. We could curb the tide of hate. We could curb the tide of discrimination. We could curb the tide of disunity. We can change. Some positivity there from Alan. He says everyone can help by simply just loving, accepting and supporting our friends and family who were gay. As for the LGBTQ community here in Atlanta, one business owner I spoke with tonight, he's warning other businesses to get security measures in place now. So if violence does strike here, it won't be too late.